Hi, and happy Wednesday. Today is our live question and answer. Our topic is five quick tips for pumping at work. So our question and answer, our live you know, weekly question and answer at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time is going to be weekly. Every week we're going to have a topic that we are discussing and of course this is a big one for all of us moms that are returning to work and pumping and learning how to juggle it all. So we're going to give just a few seconds, maybe a minute or so to get some mommies um, joining in. I love seeing all the waves and we always welcome all the questions that you moms might have. Of course, every week we have our live question and answer tied to a blog. So when you go to specterbabyusa.com, it will there will be a blog section that you can click. And once you click in that blog section, not only will you be able to see what blog is tied to this week's uh, topic, but you'll also be able to see all the amazing blog articles that we have available to our moms and our families, which is so, so, so important because we are here to support our moms and our families. So during this live question and answer on Facebook, we'll be able to have the direct link to the blog, that article that we are talking about today. So again, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jen Foster. I am the senior IDCLC with Spectre Baby USA. It's wonderful to be back with all of you. I always enjoy doing these question and answers. I always enjoy doing these live offerings every Wednesday. And again, it's every Wednesday from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it goes as long as our mommies have questions that we need to answer. Of course, with the, our going live on Instagram and Facebook, the Instagram will often limit us to that hour. So we are limited to that in that respect. So returning to work and pumping is often a challenge and we have a lot of questions surrounding that. And before we jump into those five quick tips, one little thing I do want to add is moms will often ask, okay, I have baby, I'm home with baby, when do I really need to start worrying about pumping to return to work and having this huge freezer stash? Well, first of all, really don't worry about that at first, okay? It's really, really important that you allow yourself a good four weeks postpartum to help establish that milk supply. Why that's so important is because not only do you have this new little bundle of joy that you're having to take care of and snuggle and love, right? But there's a lot of stuff to juggle at the same time. So it's not essential to be adding pumping in during that time. So when you really need to focus on that is about two to three weeks before you return to work or school. And that's when you can reach out to one of the IBCLCs on staff here at Spectra Baby USA. And we are more than welcome, we are more than happy, excuse me, to help you along that journey. So on Facebook, we have the direct link to our blog article that is now live for five quick tips to pumping at work. And if you're on Instagram, this video will be live for 24 hours on our story. But we do welcome you to please jump over to, after you're viewing, jump over to our Facebook page and you'll be able to see that direct link also. And we'll work to provide that to you. So for those of you that are on your lunch hour or crunch for time, etc., please let's, we're just going to jump right into those quick tips for pumping at work, okay? So one of those tips for pumping at work is making sure that you leave appropriate extra parts at work, at your office. So most of you probably have a desk, and I know a lot of moms have said, hey, Jen, hey, Spectra, um, Baby USA, I have a dedicated drawer that is nice and organized, little baskets, and you can find those at nice stores like Dollar Tree, etc., where you can have a basket of duckbill valves, of backflow protectors, of extra tubing, because we know that things happen, right? If you have older kids, um, before they you put your pump in your pumping bag or whatever the case is, they might 
pull the tubing out. A nice, well-meaning pet at home might chew the tubing. So always bringing extra parts such as tubing, duckbill valves, even flanges and collection containers, collection bottles can be extremely helpful so that when you get to work, not only do you have extra parts to use while pumping, but in the event that anything happens, like you forget something or it's time to replace a part, it's all there for you. Okay, so that is extremely important and we, are, we would highly recommend that that's one of those really quick tips that's really important. So um, we have a mommy on Instagram that chimed in. She says she needs more of those circle protector pieces. Love to find those in stores. So again, um, Target is now carrying our breast pumps and spare parts on their shelves. So I highly recommend that you check that out. If you don't see the spare parts or our breast pumps at the Target stores, talk to the store manager and say, hey, this is now nationwide. I would really like for you to carry these spare parts because this is something that I need as your customer. And I would really like you to look into this. So please look into this. Our, our, um, those of you that are asking about it and we are so excited that that's now nationwide so yay 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 yay! absolutely I love I love the mommies chiming in so keep that up okay love the hearts and the waves and the questions so keep that up all right so it is really 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 important now another thing I would like to add is is that you can change flange sizes during your pumping journey so especially if you get the s1 or the s2 it comes with the 24 millimeter flange and the 28 millimeter flange. So it might be a really good idea to keep some of the a different size flange at your office, at your work, and even at home. So if, if it starts to feel not right, you're always welcome to reach out to one of us on staff here, an IBCLC that we have here on staff so that we can talk about flange sizing. But having an extra uh, size flange is always really important to have just in the event that you might need to be switching flange sizes. I'm a pumping mom at work. I just returned to work about a week or so ago, and I'm an exclusive pumping mom after the loss of our son. I pump every two hours. So I'm dealing with this just along with you mommies as we're talking about this. So I will say that I went from a 28 millimeter flange to a 24 millimeter flange. And since I used the Spectra S1, it was nice and convenient that the, that was an option for me, that I was able to switch to the other size flange. So let's, I love that mommies are chiming in. And as we're talking about this, some mommies have said, oh, that they're Target fans and that the Targets are slowly getting them in. And yes, as we start to do things like this, where they are rolling parts in, um, you know, it will maybe take some time to get into all those stores, but again, Talk to your store manager because that's really important that they're aware that you know these that this is now nationwide kind of get on the bandwagon here and get those spare parts in okay so another mommy says I wish the store sold um, 21 millimeter uh, size flanges now Spectra does offer a 20 millimeter size flange and you can find that on our Spectra website at spectrababyusa.com because we do offer 20 millimeter 24 millimeter, 28 millimeter, and 32. So if you don't find that in the stores, which I'm sure that we're gonna be working on very, very soon, but if you don't find that, please make sure to go to, uh, reach out to one of our LCs, reach out to our customer care center or, um, by phone or by email on Facebook, you know, and see what we can do to assist you with that because we are here to help with flange sizing and any suggestions that you might have, okay? So let's go over here to Facebook. We have, um, <laughs> I love, Alicia chimed in. She says, hi, great to see you back. I have missed your live videos. So thank you. It is always great to be back. And, you know, it's one of those things that we did have to take our time to grieve, but I am back to work and I'm excited to see all of you mommies here. So uh, let's jump to the next little quick tip. So again, we talked about having extra pieces at work. So that is so, so, so important. I cannot emphasize that enough between, I'll be in my office here pumping myself and I'll be like, oh no, I need to change my duckbill valve. And I'll look and I'll be like, 
darn it, I forgot it today. So having those extra little pieces can be extremely helpful. All right. So again, that blog is live. If you head over to our Facebook um, live stream that's going on right now, we do have that live blog post link that is live that you can go and check that out. Okay. So our next tip is having a good hands-free pumping bra. Oh my goodness, this is a life changer. Our oldest is 15, and I'm telling you, they were just not available on the market. And you know, it was something that you would have to hold those flanges in, and there was no way, on goodness, that you could sit there and be massaging or doing breast compressions or you know anything that really helps to create um, that extra milk that you can get from hands-on pumping. So with hands-on pumping, these hands-free bras are just so essential. Now you're in luck. I have one here with me. This is what we're talking about with the hands-free bra. So what it does is it wraps around your body and it can zip right in the front so that the flanges just fit right in here. And what you can do is once that it's, it's holding your flanges in place to pump, which is amazing, again I cannot emphasize this enough is that you can use your hands when you're pumping. so you can do nice um, massaging you can do breast compressions you can do all sorts of wonderful wonderful things that will help increase your pumping yield so research shows us that your pumping yield can increase up to 30 percent 30 percent when you're doing hands-on pumping so again, mommies, look into a good hands-free pumping bra. Have one in your pump bag, have one in your desk drawer, and of course you're gonna need it at home too, right? And so that jumps right back into one of our other um, quick tips is try to carry the least amount as possible from work to home and back from home to work. Now why would you be like, why would you say, why would we wanna say this, right? Well, I don't know if any of you have seen that really funny meme of The Rock carrying this huge suitcase, right? And we sit there and talk about, oh my goodness, this is that breastfeeding pumping mom at work, right? Carrying this huge bag of supplies. Well, if you have some extra parts in place at work, if you have a spare uh, pump that you can leave at work, such as you don't have this wonderful lactation room at your office that you can keep one pump there or use, use some of the parts there. Of course, Spectra breast pumps are only FDA approved as a single user pump. So if you don't have a spare pump that you work and one it's at home, then of course you need to bring it back and forth. But if you have extra parts at work, then you don't have to carry as much, okay? So that, that's one of those big tips. So let's jump in. I think we are, I'm missing some questions here, and I don't want you guys to feel ignored over here. So let's see. On Instagram, we say, how often should you change your duckbill valve? Well, if you're exclusively pumping, such as myself, we would recommend about every two months. And if you're part-time pumping, about every three months. Now we have wonderful infographics that you can that we can share with you about when to change all of your parts, which would be your backflow protectors and your duckbill valves especially. Because if you're not changing your parts appropriately, that can really impact how much you're able to pump. And when you impact how much you're able to pump, the efficiency of your pumping experience, ultimately, that can impact your milk supply. So it is really, really important that you are changing your parts appropriately. Let's jump back over to Facebook here. And it says, oh, <laughs> I love to see these mommies that say, great to see you again. That's so sweet. All right, so I love how um, Emily has chimed in. She says, game changer having two pumps. And I will say absolutely yes, absolutely. I have heard a lot of moms that say, I have the S2, and I leave that at work because I have my nice little pumping station at work and I leave that at work to use my S2 at work 
and then I have my S1 at home, especially when you have older ones such as myself, um, that S1 is wonderful so that when you're pumping that you can pick it up and you can go and you know start dinner, you can change a diaper, um, if in the middle of pumping, you know, nature calls or whatever the case is, you, it's nice and portable that you can bring with you. Um, but of course, you know, we've had mommies that have said, hey, with my S2, it, I can make it just as portable. You know, there are things that you can do such as a battery pack or other options to make it portable because we know that, you know, pumping and having a good, efficient breast pump is so, so, so important. So important. So let's go over here and make sure that I'm not missing anybody. All right, so how often should you change those duck bill valves? We did cover that. Exclusive pumping every two months, um, part-time pumping every three months, and we have a wonderful infographic that we'll, we're gonna share with you over here on our, our, Facebook, our, our Facebook Live section here in the comments so that you're able to see that. Um, again, one thing that I would highly recommend as we're talking about this is getting some good, good, good support. And I think that's one of our, um, one of our five quick tips here. Of course it is. Number five is make friends with other pumping moms in your office. And I would even go even further, having some friends outside of the office, having a good support system. And we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful option for you mommies on Facebook. We have an exclusive pumping mom group and we have a pumping mom group. So of course we know that exclusive pumping moms that they face um, different issues a lot of times than just part-time pumping moms, mean, meaning moms that are returning to work or school and are nursing baby when they're with baby. So when we talk about returning to work, those moms that are exclusive pumping may or may not face the same issues as moms that are part-time pumping. So, you know, we, we do have those two Facebook groups and we can put those links in there on the Facebook Live. And if you do not, if you're just on Instagram and you don't have Facebook or you do, either way, direct message us, okay? Direct message us, we'll provide you any links or infographics that you need, okay? So let's jump back over here on Facebook and it says, um, having an extra pump at work is a huge lifesaver. Yes, it is. Is it is. Is there a Spectra reseller would love to have a pump at work? Okay, so um, Spectra breast pumps are only FDA approved as single user breast pumps. So you can find a local IBCLC that is certified through Spectra Baby USA, and you can find that on our interactive map. They do sell Spectra breast pumps, so you can contact them about getting a breast pump. And again, now we're in Target stores, so you could visit a local Target store and you can get an additional breast pump that way as well. You can go on SpectraBabyUSA.com and you can get a, a extra breast pump there. If you have not obtained a breast pump through your insurance company, then hey, that's a great option there too. Look into getting a Spectra breast pump through your insurance company because, of course, with the Affordable Care Act, um, you can obtain a breast pump. Now, sometimes there is a loophole where you need a prescription, and you can get that from your OB, your midwife, or your doctor. And that is one of those contingencies where they can help you get that breast pump also. Okay? So look into that. Now, we also have that insurance lookup tool where you can look up a what's called a durable medical equipment company that carries Spectra breast pump part, Spectra breast pump parts and pumps, and those are the DMEs or the durable medical equipment companies that you're going to want to go through to be able to obtain a Spectra breast pump through your insurance. So I believe I missed a comment here or question. Is it normal to pump less milk than my baby is taking? So pumping is not the same output or yield or stimulation to the body or to the breast as if a baby was at breast. So the reason why is that there's a lot involved with that human touch. There's a lot involved with those wonderful lactation hormones of the oxytocin and prolactin that really come into play when that baby is at breast and baby is touching breast. 
and there is just so much it's just a different experience so yes absolutely now one thing to keep in mind is having a, a realistic expectation of how much you should be pumping at a time okay so the average pumping yield is about two ounces combined size ladies keep that in mind because when you're looking at this collection bottle and it's showing five ounces or so they're in our minds we're thinking I've got to fill this up but in reality a realistic um, a realistic expectation should be about two ounces combined anywhere from about two to four ounces combined depending on your breast capacity and also depending on other factors so keep that in mind do not expect to be filling up these these five ounce collection bottles on both sides every time that you pump because pumping pumping your breast milk is not a good indicator of how much milk you're producing okay so please 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 keep that in mind be positive believe in yourself okay because if baby is getting breast milk only from mom guess what whatever's going in has to be coming out right and whatever's coming out is because of you mommy because of your wonderful milk so keep that in mind that you know just because you're pumping X amount does not mean that that's what baby is getting at breast okay so second time mom we're jumping over here to um, Facebook and she's saying, <clears throat> excuse me, Kristen says, second time mom, and I had another pump before. She had a Medela before. I love, love, love my S1. So glad that the place I used to order my pump had led me to this pump. We're so excited. We're so excited. So yes, um, I love how um, Miranda checks, uh, chimed in here on Facebook and she says support is so important. Yes, absolutely. And again, going back to our quick tips, um, you'll notice that if you have another mom that's in the office that's pumping and you guys serve as support to each other and cheerleaders to each other, not only can you be absolutely just paramount in reaching your breastfeeding goals because you're in each other's corners, but it's also a good thing to be able to go to somebody and just say, hey, guess what? I pumped this amount, this much this time. And that your, your support person there in the office can be like, you know what? keep in mind Jen that is not a good indicator of how much milk you're producing sometimes when it comes from another person it is just it just kind of chimes a little bit differently in our minds where we're like oh yeah okay that's that's right that's right so it's so important to keep that in mind and to have a good support person in place all right, so Lisa on Facebook says, I just discovered hands-on pumping and finally had a great pumping session last night. That's awesome, Lisa. I love to hear that. And it's so amazing because now there's studies, study after study after study that's now coming out to show that it does improve your pumping yield. It really, really does. And it's about 30% more that you're able to pump when you do hands-on pumping. So um, I love all the hellos, hello, hello. So um, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So when we talk about hands-on pumping, we do have wonderful infographics when it comes to that. And so um, if you do not see that, please comment on here, but we do have those wonderful infographics that, um, that we can provide to you. If you wanna direct message us, if you want to private message our IBCLC Facebook page, please do that. We'll provide it to you. It's in our mom groups that we talked about on Facebook. On Facebook, we have an exclusive pumping mom group and a pumping mom group. So keep that in mind, also. Okay. So let's go. Let's go through our quick tips. We have keeping extra pu uh, pumping parts at at the office, okay? So we talked about keeping extra flanges if that's possible, keeping extra backflow protectors, keeping tubing there. I know a lot of moms don't even think about this. They're just like, wait, I need backflow, I need backflow protectors and duckbow valves. I hear about duckbow valves a lot. But also, what about collection bottles? Keeping collection bottles there. Okay, I can tell you personally that I have I have done that. I've gone to pump and I'm like, Oh no, what do I pump into? And it's like, all right, hand expression for the for the win, right? 
Um, but I've seen some mommies do some life hacks there. Well, they'll, they'll tape like a little collection, milk collection bag onto the bottom of the flange and they just pump directly into that. Um, I will tell you firsthand that I've, I've had to try that and it's pretty challenging because once you start to get a certain amount in there, it starts to rip on the tape and then the milk might spill. And I know any pumping mom would say, I do cry over my spilt breast milk. I've been there and I have done that. Absolutely. Okay, so let's jump back over to Instagram and see if any mommies have any questions. I love how mommies say, thank you so much. I was worried. Yes, we are here to help support you and we want to encourage you. And especially, I don't care if it's your first baby or your second or your third or your ninth, for goodness sakes. It doesn't matter how what number baby it is. Every breastfeeding and pumping journey is very different. Every baby is different and unique. So it is so important to keep in mind that no question is a stupid question, okay, mommies? So keep those questions coming. Keep those concerns coming. If you don't wanna make it public on a live, direct message us on Instagram. Private message us on our IDCLC Facebook page. Why I say that on Facebook page, um, we have a dedicated inbox on our Spectra Certified IBCLC Facebook page, and it is answered by our one of our IBCLCs on staff. All of our IBCLCs on staff have breastfed and pumped for our babies, okay? So we're not just speaking from a textbook or speaking because we took a test and had all these hours with mommies. We're talking from personal and professional experience, and that's important too. Okay, so um, I love all the little hearts and the waves and all that is wonderful. It's wonderful. All right, so we have a mommy, Angel Mommy on Instagram, and she says, do you guys have a buyback exchange program for unused pumps? I have a brand new S2 with accessories. I don't want to throw it out, but it's taking up room. Not to mention I'm on maternity leave. Okay, so Angel Mama, um, Angel Mommy, um, if you don't plan to use your pump, then we do not have a buyback or, ex or exchange program, but I would, if it's not open, then I would talk and reach out to our customer care. We do have a specified time frame by which that you can return the pump. And we also, for those pumps that have been utilized, we do have a two-year warranty on those pumps should you need a new pump. So Angel Mommy, I would highly recommend that you reach out to customer care um, at spectrababyusa.com. Now we used to have a program by which that moms can mail us their pumps that they've used and we would provide it to moms in need in other countries. We don't currently have that program um, and we appreciate your question, but I would highly recommend that you direct message us, Angel Mommy, um, or you can email customer care at spectrababyusa.com. Okay. Suggestions for cleaning parts while at work. There's no sink while I'm pumping. Okay. So this is one of my favorites because I know a lot of people say, um, you know, if there's not a pump, if there's not a sink, which we have to go back to, um, you know, that there there are some legislative things in place that a mom should have a dedicated area to pump her breast milk, and which includes a sink. So, um, depending, if I would direct message us and let's discuss that also because that might need, need to be something that is a, an accommodation that's provided for you at work. But one thing that I love to do is what's called a wet bag. And you can find those on Amazon or other places in stores. And what a wet bag is, is it is wonderful. I wish I had one right next to show you. But it basically you can put all your pump parts in there and you can zip it up and then you can put it in the fridge at work. And then that way you can just wash all of the parts at the end of the day at work or when you get home. And so it will help it keep it at a stable temperature where you're able to utilize it for the next pumping session. Ideally, according to CDC guidelines, it's best to wash it after every pumping session. But if you don't have a sink at work to be able to do so, then what I would recommend you do is invest in a wet bag that you can put your parts in there 
and you can keep that wet bag in the fridge. Nobody will know what's in it, right? Um, it just looks like a, just looks like a, a zipped up cloth bag. You can leave that in the fridge, take it out for the next pumping session, and then pump. I would not recommend that you do the backflow protectors, okay? Because when you put these backflow protectors there in the refrigerator, they it, that silicone makes it not as efficient for the next pumping session. And I say that because I pump hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And this is number five that I'm pumping for. So, And I know a lot of our mommies can probably attest and go, yep, me too. I've been there and done that. So don't put the backflow protector in there, but you can put your flanges, your collection bottles, um, your duckbill valves, etc., all in that wet bag. And then at the next pumping session, take it all out and use it and then keep it in that wet bag. Nobody will know what's in it. Again, keeping it in the fridge will keep it, keep it at a more stable temperature. And then when you're able to wash all of those pumps, those pumping parts at once. Um, ideally, again, CDC guidelines would want us to um, wash those, those pumping parts after every pumping session. But when that's not possible, putting it in a wet bag like that can be a lifesaver, absolutely a lifesaver. All right, so what other questions do you mommies have? Let's see. All right, so we have, um, again, so if you have any questions about your pump in terms of warranty or any questions about troubleshooting, you can send an email to customercare at spectrababyusa.com. If you have, um, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, if you have any questions for IBCLCs that are here on the staff, we have a link here to our Facebook page on the Facebook, on Instagram, you can direct message us. But let's go through back through those five quick tips for pumping at work because I know mommies are jumping in and jumping off. It might be your lunch hour or not, depending on where you are because we're on the East Coast here. So leave an extra pair, uh, leave an extra set of pumping parts at the office, okay? We talked about that. We talked about getting a good hands-free pumping bra and hands-on pumping is important. Mommies, I cannot emphasize that enough. I cannot do so enough times. I know you're probably like, okay, whatever, Jen, you've said it enough times, but um, that hands-free pumping bra will be a lifesaver. Um, have as many sets of pump parts as you possibly can at the office so that you don't have to carry as much from home to work and work to home. Um, trying to look, in, look into getting an extra pump to stay at work can be very beneficial, but of course, if you need your pump when you're home, don't leave it at work because then you're in a pickle when you're at home, okay? So try not to do that. All right, so um, the other part was making friends at work that are pumping also, and if there's not one at work, get support outside of work. Have somebody in your corner that's there to support you. That's so, so, so important. You need that support. And we're here to support you no matter what your breastfeeding goal is, whether it's a day, a week, a month, a couple months, a year, whatever your breastfeeding goal is and your pumping goal is, we're here to support you every step of the way. So we have another question here from, from Ashley on Instagram. She says, what are the most effective settings to use for a quick pumping session at work? That's a great question. And I would say that because the settings are so customizable, that it's very important that you play around with your pumping settings, okay? So a lot of moms will say, hey, I pump best for a quick pumping session on just the massage mode, just the letdown mode. All power to you, go for it. Because if that's what works well for you, do that. Some moms will say, hey, instead of going from letdown to expression, I just pump on expression mode at work for that quick pumping session. And do that, you can try that too. But when you're asking for specific settings, it's really important to look at it that every mom and baby is, are different. And so having one set cookie cutter answer is not gonna be the right answer for you. So if you wanna direct message us, we can go through that as well. Is Spectra replacement parts FSA cards? So I'm, I'm guessing that you're asking if you can use your FSA benefits to purchase your Spectra breast pump parts. I would talk to, with your um, insurance provider 
and seeing what is covered and what is not covered. I know for me personally, um, I can get any breast breastfeeding parts. I can get any um, breastfeeding products such as, you know, um, it's escaping me right now, but um, the breast pads or any sort of creams or anything like that. Um, but you have to check with your insurance provider because you know we don't we don't necessarily want to misdirect you. So give a call to your insurance provider and find out about your FSA benefits because of course if you don't use them you lose them, right? So it'd be wonderful to have those parts um, those parts covered. Also, when you're on the phone with your insurance provider, ask about if spare pumping parts are covered. That's a good question to ask. Why is because a lot of times more and more companies are covering replacement breast pump, breastfeeding parts because they know that the longer the baby is breastfed and, and provided the express breast milk, the healthier the baby will be, the healthier mommy will be, which is ultimately cutting down their cost of covering you as an insurance, um, you know, for insurance purposes. So, you know, it, it is more and more you need to call and ask um, your insurance company to see if those spare pumps, those spare parts are covered. And sometimes I know, for example, TRICARE will cover parts up to 36 months postpartum sometimes. So, you know, talking to your insurance provider is extremely important when it comes to things like that also. All right, so let me go through here and see if there's any other questions. Let me jump back over to Facebook here. All right, so how often should I wash the backflow protectors? Um, Crystal from Facebook, I would highly recommend that you take apart your backflow protector. So I have a pump right here. Take apart all three pieces and allow it because you're going to notice that some condensation can get into the, to this part here. That condensation occurs because breast milk is nice and warm, right? So take apart these three pieces here and allow it to air dry on a, a paper towel or an unused dish towel in between pumping sessions because you don't want anything to occur here where something unfriendly is growing on this side, even though it's a closed system pump. So take that apart. In terms of washing it, you know, you can wash it with your other pumping, um, your other pumping parts that you're utilizing. But since it's a closed system pump, you don't necessarily have to, because it doesn't come in contact with the milk. So you don't necessarily have to wash it at the same frequency. Okay. Uh, Kelsa says um, from Facebook, is there a battery pack that is compatible to make the S2 portable? So yes, there are. Um, it, it would have to be 12 volt compatible battery pack. And we would highly recommend that you reach out to our certified uh, lactation, IBCLC, excuse me, our Spectra certified IBCLC Facebook page and private message us and we can help troubleshoot with you to see if you have one in mind. But also I would highly encourage you, Kelsa, since you're on Facebook, to join our, our pumping mom groups because moms that are in there have found compatible battery packs that they use with their S2s and they, it's been, they say it's a game changer, it's a life changer. And so I would highly encourage you, again, that goes back to finding somebody that's in your corner and finding somebody that's there to support you, right? So making sure that you have the, the proper information. If you have any questions, you, you know, just please make sure to reach out to us. So Sherry from Facebook says, I've read you shouldn't pump more than 30 minutes, but also that you should always pump until empty. What if it takes longer than 30 minutes to empty? So I would say, Sherry, is that again, it goes back to, you know, finding the right pumping settings. Are you doing hands-on pumping? Because hands-on pumping can really help make sure that you're emptying really well. The other part of that is, is that what point postpartum are you? Because we know that your pumping hormones don't start to really stabilize until about six to eight weeks postpartum. And when you're pumping earlier than that, that's when moms get maybe more milk yield than they would after that six to eight week point, which is why when moms go back to work, they go, oh my goodness, I'm not pumping the same amount I was at home. I must not be producing enough. I'm not enough. My milk is not enough. I'm not making enough milk. And that's just inaccurate because the reason why is, is that your, your hormones were not regulated. And so it wasn't regulated to what baby actually needs. Okay. So a baby 
actually nutritionally needs about 24 to 30 ounces per day and early on closer to the 24 ounces. So if it's taking longer than 30 minutes to empty, um, it's not bad per se to pump longer than 30 minutes, okay? Yes, the Spectra pumps are, the, the manufacturer default is that it will auto shut off at 30 minutes, but when you turn it back on, it saves your settings. So if you were to want to pump longer, especially moms that love to power pump or looking into power pumping, etc., cetera, um, you can turn that pump back on and it will remember your pumping settings that you had utilized during that, ex that expression mode. Okay, so look at your try or play around with pumping settings. Do hands on pumping and if also reach out to an IBCLC. And we have IBCLCs on staff here with Spectra Baby USA. So reach out to one of us and see what we can do to assist you. Okay, so it's been fantastic having all of you mommies on today. I love, I love the interaction. I love the waves. I love the hearts. I love the questions. And I, you know, we are so excited. I'm so excited to be back with you guys. I'm so excited to be back at work with Spectra Baby USA after our, after our leave of absence. And if there's anything that we can do to help support you, please, please, please let us know because that's why we're here. Um, we are here because we're passionate about what we do. We're passionate about helping you. We're passionate about this field. So it's not a chore for us. Yes, it's a job, but you know, we're here to help support you. All right. So thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all the condolences that I'm getting here, um, on this, this live stream. I appreciate that very much. And um, we sincerely appreciate all of you guys um, being here with us. If your question has not been answered, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook, like you're, you're chiming in right here at the end, please don't worry. We're going to get to your question. We are here to help support you. Um, you can direct message us on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, you can continue to comment, and our IBCLCs will um, continue to answer questions and be there for you. Okay, so please don't feel like that you're being ignored. We are not ignoring you. We are here to support you. So just keep commenting. Um, you can private message us, uh, private message us, direct message us. We are here to support you. Okay, so thank you again for joining us. We will see you next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And thank you again for the warm welcome back. All right, you guys have a fantastic day.